صحيح الجزائر Hello and welcome to the continuous coverage of the Arab Summit held in Algiers on the 1st and 2nd of November in the International Conference Center of the Latif Fahal. First, the proceedings of the 31st Ordinary Session of the Arab Summit ended on Wednesday afternoon at the International Conference Center in Algiers following a plenary session chaired by President Abdelmajid Tabun. The summit was concluded by the Algiers Declaration, read by the permanent representative of Algeria to the United Nations, Ambassador Nadir Larbawi, and the announcement of the next Arab summit to be held in Saudi Arabia. The second day of the Arab summit has resulted in the release of a joint Arab declaration, which deals with the various issues that challenge the Arab nation. The Algiers Declaration has put the roadmap for the Arab countries to react on the surrounding issues of the nation. The Palestinian cause represents the central cause of the Arab countries as the Algiers Declaration put on the top of the agenda. The situation in the Arab world was the number two to be announced in the agenda, as all Arab countries clarified their joint position to react to the issues with their variations from security, sovereignty, and inter-Arab relations. Strengthening and modernizing the joint Arab action with all what it faces from regional and international challenges was also on the agenda. The declaration also highlighted the relationship with neighboring countries and partnerships. And on the same declaration, Arab countries affirmed their reaction to the international situations and the importance for Arab countries to participate in shaping the parameters of the international system.
And at the summit level, the Algerian president, Mr. Abdel Majid Haboun, paid tribute to the consensual partnership or consensual brotherly spirit that prevailed in the summit's work, allowing Arab leaders to take many important decisions. <laughs> باستعراض الأوضاع السائدة في منطقتنا العربية وفي محيطنا الإقليمي وكذا على الساحة الدولية واتخاذ عدد من القرارات الهامة التي من شأنها أن تتوجه بعملنا المشترك مباشرة نحن المواطن العربي للتكفل the Algerian president also paid tribute to the wise views and initiatives that had been agreed upon at the Alger summit, reaffirming the firm Arab commitment to support the nation's issues, notably the Palestinian cause. <laughs> في سبيل حماية مصالحنا المشتركة والعمل كمجموعة موحدة وقوية بمقدراتها ومواردها للتموقع فعلا أن نكون مؤثرين إن القرارات الطموحة تدفعنا لمضاعفة الجهود خلال فترة رئاستنا للمجلس من أجل العمل على تنفيذ ما تم الاتفاق عليه وإنني على يقين أن روح التوافق والتضامن التي ميزت هذه القمة ستكون حافزا للمضي قدما نحو تجسيد أهدافنا المشتركة President Aboun also stressed that the Algiers summit was an important stop for the unification of Arab action. For his part, the Foreign Minister, Mr. Ramtal Amamra, held a joint press conference with the Secretary General of the Arab League, Mr. Ahmed Abu Ghait, at the end of the proceedings of the 31st session of the Arab Summit held in Algiers. The two men expressed satisfaction at the resounding success of the Algiers Summit, saying that the Unanimous adoption of the Algiers Declaration by the members of the League is the best proof of the success of this summit. Mr. Lamamra said that all the indicators proved the success of the summit and aligning that it's a success for the Algerian state, for the Algerian citizens and for all the Arabs. The success is clear. The success of the state, the success of citizens, and of course the success of the leader of the whole preparation and the direct supervisor of the holding of the summit, President Abdel Majid Tabun. It's also a success for Arabs as they knew how to meet after the coronavirus pandemic and how to realize with a high political sense the importance of unifying their ranks and their say and how to realize the seriousness and sensitivity of the regional and international situation amid which this outstanding summit is being held. We can consider that this summit was a summit of renewal and innovation that put a big building block in the process of consolidating and developing the joint Arab action. We can note that the Arab League, which is a long-standing organization, proved on this occasion its capacity to interact with the events and its capacity to adapt to the developments of the joint Arab action and even predict what will happen in the future. For his part, Mr. Abul praised Algeria for mobilizing all the necessary conditions for the smooth running and success of the summit. 
As for this summit, I totally agree with you that it's a successful summit at all levels. I personally noted the presence of 17 presidents, heads of governments, princes and crown princes, 17 out of 21. The remaining four were highly represented. So in general, it's probably one of the most attended Arab summits in terms of level. This is an important point that I wanted to say. The other point is that the Algerian Republic guaranteed all the conditions for the success of this summit. And in the same context, the Secretary General of the League of Arab States, Mr. Ahmed Abul Ghaid, has announced that the coming Arab summit will be hosted in the Saudi capital, Riyadh, in March next year. This will follow the Arab-Chinese summit to be held in the same city on the 9th of the coming month. It has been agreed that the next summit will be held in Riyadh before the 30th of March of next year. And the Tunisian president, Mr. Qais Saied, praised Algeria's approach to Arab unification, describing it as correct and a pretty thorough in the history of the Arab region. Qais Saied responding to a question from All24 News on the sidelines of the second day of the Arab summit called for addressing the real causes of division in the Arab world. Why unite and why did we get parted? We must address the reasons and not the results. I believe that President Abdel Majid Taboun's approach to reunification, which is not the first, is the right approach, a historical approach, an approach that can bring a turning point in the history of the Arab world. We achieved what we have reached unanimously, but why and what were the reasons that led us to this dissension and division? And why don't we negotiate with others together and separately? Everyone knows the reasons, and we can't reach any results unless we address these reasons and causes. The Arab summit hosted by Algeria has left great satisfaction among Arab leaders who witnessed all the details of Algeria's summit going from the great organization of the biggest Arab nations meeting. And leaders of Arab countries also praised the role that Algeria plays to bring together Arab countries under one word to tackle the issues the whole Arab community is facing. The Secretary General of the League of Arab States, Mr. Ahmed Abul Ghaib, said that the Arab summit achieved great success which is evident in the high-level representation by the member states. As Palestinian calls took center stage during Arab summit, Arab leaders have unanimously appreciated Algeria's achievement for Palestinian reconciliation through the Algiers Declaration, the move which marks the summit's success ahead of time. <laughs> The Arab Summit opened its doors for the second day to discuss the most important files, foremost among which is the Palestinian cause. In the meantime, Arab leaders did not fall short on appreciating and valorizing Algeria's historic achievement of bringing Palestinian factions together for reconciliation under the leadership of President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun. Each of the leaders emphasized on the importance of joint action to adopt new and effective mechanisms to face major crises in the Arab region. We would like to appreciate the efforts made to make the summit a success and which are reflected by the wise management of its proceedings. The Kingdom also appreciates the outcomes of the summit that reflect the role of the Arab League in serving joint Arab action. The leaders of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Mauritania and many others esteemed Algeria's hard work to promote Palestinian national unity and overcome its internal division as well as bringing Arab visions together. <laughs> The Islamic Republic of Mauritania renews its firm adherence of finding a stable, quick and just solution that guarantees the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state and we are very optimistic about what has recently been signed with the reconciliation agreement of the Palestinian factions under the aegis of the brotherly Algeria.
We salute the Palestinian brothers for what they have done in order to overcome the state of internal division, and we affirm our appreciation for all the efforts and initiatives made by the brothers in the Algerian Republic of bringing views together in a way that enhances Palestinian national unity. As it's included in Algiers' declaration, Palestine was and is still the main core issue which Arab states' leaders have unanimously agreed upon, the cause that always puts the Arabs on the same stream by supporting the inalienable right of Palestinians and establishing an independent and sovereign Palestine. Algerian President Mr. Abdelmajid Tabun declared on the second day of the Arab summit a new initiative aimed at supporting the Palestinian cause on the international scene. Palestinian President Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, on his part, stated that Palestine is to reconsider the entire existing relations with the Zionist entity. Usama Ayadi with more. Algerian President Abdel Majid Taboun called for the establishment of an Arab Communication and Coordination Committee to support the Palestinian cause, expressing Algeria's readiness to transfer this vital demand to the United Nations to demand the convening of an extraordinary General Assembly to grant the State of Palestine full membership in the UN body. <laughs> لمرافقة مسار تحقيق الوحدة الوطنية الفلسطينية ودعم طلب دولة فلسطين للحصول على العضوية الكاملة في منظمة الأمم المتحدة. The President of the State of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, called on the Arab Summit held in Algeria to form two Arab ministerial committees in order to support the State of Palestine at the international level and expose the practices of the Zionist occupation authorities, while the second is to implement the Arab Peace Initiative. We are looking forward to your support through making a decision from the summit to form an Arab ministerial committee to act on the international level to expose the practices of the Zionist occupation authorities and explain our Arab version, because our version is absent in the West, and what the West knows is the Zionist version. And implementing the Arab Peace Initiative and gaining more European countries to recognize the state of Palestine and obtain the full membership in the UN. Abbas, in his speech during the second day of the 31st Arab Summit, affirmed that the Palestinian state will reconsider the entire existing relationship with the Zionist entity, which is systematically destroying the two-state solution and violating the signed agreements. Israel is the colonizing authority which is systematically destroying the two-state solution and violating the signed agreements and continuing its unilateral practices, and we do not have another choice other than reconsidering the entire existing relationship with it. Yes, we are going to reconsider the entire existing relations with Israel as long as they do not respect anything. The new initiative by the Algerian President Abdelmajid Taboun is a further support for the Palestinian cause on the international scene. Implementing the Coordination Committee and the full membership of Palestine in the UN will play a major role in putting the Palestinian file on the top of the UN agenda in bid to find a final and lasting solution for the Palestinian issue. And in the same context, the 31st Arab Summit held in Algeria witnessed the participation of the African Union as a guest of honor, which stressed during its work the need to consolidate partnership and strengthen cooperation with the League of Arab States in order to find common solutions to the challenges on the international scene. With its Arab-African dimension, the Arab Summit meeting managed to lay the ground for the realization of unity with which Africa and the Arab countries will face their current challenges. In his speech during the opening of the 31st Arab Summit, the Senegalese president and the current head of the African Union stressed that the African Union has been working with the Arab League for nearly 40 years in order to achieve common goals noting that the Union shares Arab governance and works to strengthen African Arab works. 
I make an urgent call from Algiers to all our partners in the Arab world, including the private sector, in order to follow our common efforts regarding mutual investment and take advantage of our complementary. It is also important to stay committed together in defending our common values of culture and civilization against certain parties that are trying to turn local practices to universal arms. In turn, Mohamed Moussafiki, chairperson of the African Union Commission, called for building stronger relations between the Union and the Arab countries and emphasized the necessity for the Arab and African cooperation and solidarity to support Palestine. The Palestinian cause and the heroic struggle of the Palestinian people to defend their legal rights for freedom, independence and the establishment of their sovereign state internally and internationally is a common fundamental concern for our both organizations. It is necessary to double solidarity and cooperation between us to support the Palestinian people in a practical and efficient way in order to stop the hostilities of the occupiers, free the Palestinians and establish their sovereign state with eastern Al-Quds as its capital. The 31st Arab Summit, which concluded on Wednesday with the Algiers Declaration, throughout its meetings, recalled that African Union and the Arab region is capable of having a vital presence with its momentum among the poles of the world. The President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon, called for building an imprenable Arab economic bloc that preserves the common interest of Arab in light of exceptional regional and international circumstances that are extremely complex and sensitive in this context. Uh, Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Atani, and the Algerian President, uh, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon, oversaw the launch of the Algerian Qatari Jamin Hospital and the opening of an iron and steel factory. And to discuss more on the important outcomes of the Arab Summit, we're joined live via Skype by Professor Hamoud Salhi, an Associate Dean of International Education from California University, USA. Dr. Hamoud Salhi, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us. My pleasure, Karim. Anything for you, my friend. Thank you so much. I know it's been a very long day for you, Dr. Hamoud Salhi, with your several interventions. We cannot do without it. Oh, thank you. So, it. Dr. Hamoud Salhi, it seems that <clears throat> Algeria has a reason to celebrate. And we see that Arab leaders all agree on the fact that the Algiers summit has been a success. Now, what do we mean by Algiers summit being successful? What makes us think that it is successful? I think there are several ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. uh, one way that seems to be a sort of uh, understood or implied is that what the Algerian leadership did, it's create conditions for confidence measures. Mm -hmm. Confidence uh, in each other is lacking or has been lacking in the Arab world for quite some time. And it is a source of disagreement. 
that is behind the scene. The other one that we keep hearing is, you know, uh, uh, common interest, uh, bringing the, the, the Arab together. That is also another theme that that, that is sort of got, uh, it was very sort of eminent. We see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we see it also in the, in the report that there were so much positive things out of this summit than the negative. Even mm -hmm. when it when it came to how the outside media was, was reporting mm -hmm. about it, uh, you get a, a, a sense, uh, the Washington Post did this, mm -hmm. it, it was a, a positive positive uh, attribute uh, mm -hmm. to uh, the summit meeting while underscoring the difficult tasks that it has to do. Then I think the third important one, which is the mechanism, what you may call uh, accountability. Mm -hmm. it, just as in the case when we met, when the Arab factions met, uh, there was a, the, uh, the Algerian uh, Arab Commission that came out of that, and it was designed to oversee uh, the, the implementation of decision and play mm -hmm. a mediator or a mediator role in resolving the factions. Uh, my reading on that uh, that might exist mm -hmm. or that might come out of the uh, uh, you know coming together, and it was a very mechanism uh, to do that. Uh, this is very also very clear uh, when we see it with the, with the with the, with the Palestinian cause, uh, putting the Palestinian cause to the upfront, mm -hmm. and then the uh, normalization uh, of that Israel has with certain uh, countries, mm -hmm. a, a topic so delicate uh, because it has divided the Arab world. I think the the the, the emphasis bringing it's as of uh, reminding us that look. You can talk about the root why the why these Arab countries are not supporting the Palestinian causes, but let's take it from a positive state. Let's think about the common interest. Mm -hmm. What this brought to the front is a single dominant issue that dominated the, the entire Arab, Arab, Arab existence, uh, mm -hmm. the, the 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 Palestinian, uh, and, and and in a sense, it also it's addressed. The regional threat for us as Algerians, uh, mm. the, the, the Israeli threat is is imminent. It's it's there. We should not mm. be should, taking it lightly. But indirectly, what the Algerians does is address the issue of normalization and the context of the national interests that get all together the Arab together, mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time take it to the other level, uh, presenting a mechanism uh, for how to further advance the Palestinian rights and this. This is we get it from the idea of uh, creating an Arab uh, committee uh, uh, liaison that will work with the, the Palestinians with the end goal, and this is also very important, we have not seen this before, to uh, 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 bring the matter mm -hmm. uh, to the United Nations and have the Palestinians, uh, uh, have the United Nations declare the uh, Palestine as an independent, as a permanent state. Mm -hmm. The idea was there before, but it, 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 it did not generate the same mechanism that we have before. So you have that context. That's the goal that you set for the, mm -hmm. the, the, the implementation of decision. Even when you look at when you take it further with this idea of implementing, uh, doing things rather than talking about them, mm -hmm. it, it was very clear that the Algerians are very, very careful about getting the Palestinians' house in order, which is a, a priority. They did that when they met before in preparation for the summit. Mm -hmm. the second, getting the Arab, how, the Arab house in order. And this is very, very important for the Palestinian cause. You have to have a strategic depth. You have to have the Arabs be on the same page so that they support the cause. And this should come naturally for them. But more mm -hmm. than anything else, the third variable is the solidarity by, uh, that, that, uh, uh, that the Palestinians have with other groups like the non Allied movement, the uh, the African Union, all of these partners that will mm -hmm. work together, that promote the, the, the Palestinian uh, cause and support it for the end goal of achieving uh, a permanent statehood in the United Nations. That mm -hmm. vision, I, I think, was a sort of uh, 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 came out of this. Mm -hmm. Very when, nice. when you hear, uh, go ahead, Kevin. Yes, yes. I just wanted uh, actually to share with you uh, what uh, uh, Abdul Hamid Sayam, a professor of political science and uh, Middle East studies at uh, Rutgers uh, Bureau Chief of Al Quds Arabia at uh, the UN, he uh, gave the following statement. Let's follow and we get back to discussion. 
What made it successful, it had reached consensus. Uh, there were some fears that it might not reach that. So they worked together. And there were some points of uh, divergence and dispute. They were able to reach consensus around these issues, especially the Palestinian question. I think one of the most important elements of this summit is the outcome regarding the question of Palestine. <laughs> because the last time there was an Arab peace proposal in 2002, it calls about establishing Palestinian state, then normalization relation with Israel. Some Arab countries had uh, violated this resolution. Now what this uh, summit did is brought back the Arabs around the same principle. We must work for an independent Palestinian state with, the, with Jerusalem as its capital and support also the right of return of refugees according to resolution 194. This is a new element. It has not been there in uh, year 2002. It also talked about Arab unity, it talks about uh, combined Arab efforts, it talks about bringing the Arab uh, back to solve their own problem. It, it also talks about a, a, a joint economic vision for the Arab world to empower the Arab world. I think it is a very important uh, summit and I want to uh, take this uh, opportunity to congratulate the Algerian uh, leadership uh, head, headed by uh, President Abdel Majid Tapoun, his foreign minister, uh, Ramtan Lamamra, and all the Algerian people who worked to make this uh, summit a, a, a very distinctive and successful summit. So, uh, Dr. Hamoud uh, Salhi, all the readings and all the analyses uh, are assembled. I mean, they all uh, resemble to each other, let's say they're all similar. And uh, the Algiers summit was a summit for Arabs' reunification, support for Palestinian cause, and the revival of joint Arab action. Uh, you were uh, tackling the, uh, let's say, uh, overall evaluation of this outcome. What can we say further to highlight that it was a different summit from the uh, precedented one? I think, let me, uh, today's news, uh, you have mm -hmm. Benjamin Netanyahu is likely to be the next prime minister. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli politics today is based on the delegitimization of international, uh, of international law vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. the, the, the summit, this summit is actually listened to the Palestinians. Hanan Ashrawi, one uh, leading advocate of Palestinian rights, known for her support as a Palestinian, uh, uh, for her role in international uh, in peace negotiations mm -hmm. and all those wonderful things that she does for the, the Palestinian cause, warn us against the Palestinian losing their international legitimacy. Mm -hmm. Netanyahu, a lot, and before him, then Ross built the path for uh, taking away the international legitim legitimacy of international law. Hassan and Hanan Ashrawi, when, when, she, when she analyzed the, the failure of the peace process, mm -hmm. when she saw how the peace process made the, uh, had contributed to more settlement during mm -hmm. all this time, what you had the end result is that you have the, the, the fear, uh, and, and she's fearful, just like all Palestinians uh, about mm -hmm. that the, the peace process which was going nowhere, mm -hmm. plus the continued harassment, you know, murderer attack of the Zionist state, all of that would weaken the Palestinians. But with the declaration mm -hmm. of what Algiers did, is actually down the road, I think this might be also looked at, at what uh, it's a Palestinian de declaration, or it would be Algeria slash Palestinian declaration. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, what it did, the establishment of the Arab Liaison Committee, mm -hmm. this is where the, 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 the emphasis will be on international national law mm -hmm. on returning to the to to, uh, uh, to the real problem that Israel has to obey by international law and that uh, uh, the peace process that long sort of failed uh, has to stop Netanyahu mm -hmm. gives the Arab world the Palestinian the opportunity sadly and in a wrong context in a wrong way mm -hmm. uh, to for the Arab to think about real solutions so that's that that's also 
also makes it very different. I mean, we talk all all the communiques when you when you read them, mm -hmm. uh, they, they are similar. This one, I think, the the addition of mechanism to address the Palest the, the Palestinian uh, cause as a core issue of the Arab world has uh, uh, is different from many others. Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. So uh, these are the mechanisms that you were uh, highlighting, uh, mainly regard the Palestinian cause. Now, other agreements were actually uh, tackled during yes. this summit. Uh, what other examples and what other, uh, let's say, mechanisms uh, that can be actually used in order to implement what has been agreed upon? So there is also a sense where uh, it, it's as if when you read the, the, the communique, you have to read the whole sentences. So, yeah. so on the one hand, you talk about uh, the, the uh, what was that, economic integration, mm -hmm. uh, that we all should integrate all of that. But then it added facing the challenges that the region, or to face the challenges that the region face. It's mm -hmm. a clever way of, of bringing to highlight the most important issues. Mm -hmm. I think what the Algerians understood, and this is thanks to the, the preparation that was done ahead, is that Algeria also took a pragmatic approach in, the, in this conference. In, in, in a sense, what they wanted to convey is that yet we are going to have a, uh, a, a conference where the, uh, the Arabs will make speeches, all of those wonderful things. But we have also to be pragmatic in, uh, 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 in, in ensuring that, the, uh, number one, that the Arab will participate, which was the case. Mm. Most of the Arab, if not the, the vast majority of the Arab leaders were, were, uh, were in Algiers. Mm. So th 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 that pragmatism is also seen when we talk about anti anti economic integration. Mm -hmm. There is an, the main topic of this conference was food security. Mm -hmm. This is one item that touches everyone in the Arab world, and it should be taken seriously because it's not a political issue, it's yes. a humanitarian issue. Absolutely. So the less we're staying away from politics, that's mm -hmm. the other thing, that the more likely are we going to, to achieve results. The emphasis on confidence measures, looking mm -hmm. for the communalities, makes it very important. So you have the, this idea of uh, uh, food security, mm -hmm. looking at it from the perspective of the of the of the uh, uh, the general uh, sort of uh, mechanism mm -hmm. uh, the, the general idea of uh, economic integration so those are really some some of the main thing that we, we we can take out of this conference but for me is the is the confidence measure creating an environment for confidence measures and work for uh, common goals and then uh, build a, a vision a strategy mm -hmm. of how to better uh, the, uh, advance the Palestinian cause and not just talk about it but mm -hmm. you know remember a year from now this is the Algerian presidency so Algeria mm -hmm. could see itself as a playing a, pro, a, a primary role in, 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 in pushing uh, the Palestinians to uh, uh, you know to help uh, I mean in helping the Palestinians uh, advance uh, their mm -hmm. uh, achievement of their goal very nice and I invite you here uh, to listen to Professor Abdul Hamid Sayyam again on his overall evaluation of the outcomes I think uh, just like the way the foreign minister uh, Ramtan Lamamra said, it's a very successful summit. First, uh, the uh, presence of so many Arab leaders at the higher, uh, highest level, that is one indication. But what is more important, the outcome of the uh, Arab uh, summit meeting. There is a final communique that uh, uh, it's a comprehensive, it's precise and practical also. It's not only uh, in dealing with the Palestinian question, but with uh, national Arab security, with the economic cooperation, with dealing with the regional issues like Yemen, like Syria, like all these things. So the final communique, in fact, it's a, a very comprehensive and it, uh, it answers so many questions. And what is the Arab world is looking now for is to see these uh, resolutions implemented uh, as soon as possible. Very nice indeed. So again, um, Dr. Ahmoud Salhi, we see that uh, the analysis are all uh, similar and we are all actually shedding the light on how uh, positive the outcomes are. And then again, 
getting back to the mechanism, uh, the mechanism that can be actually implemented in order to make, uh, let's say, these uh, agreements and, and you know, points adopted by the summit actually come to reality. Uh, what can we uh, say in particular when it comes to economy? Because it is, uh, let's say, the core uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, solution. To, to solve uh, may, many problems, but then economy is interrelated with security again. And I guess we have tackled this uh, point before uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi uh, in uh, previous uh, coverages, but then just to bring this uh, into perspective and to delineate matters for our audiences, what can Arab leaders do more in order to, let's say, safeguard the economy, Arab economy, and also uh, what can be done together in order to have this kind of security in the Arab world? So th this is really the, the, the most challenging mm. issue uh, that faces uh, uh, the Arab world. Uh, uh, for a number of reasons, structural, it has to do with the conditions of the Arab economies. Uh, not all uh, Arab economies are at the same uh, uh, level. Uh, some of them are poorer, others are very rich. The second thing is that the nature of the, uh, the Arab economy itself, uh, that it varies from using advanced technologies to less advanced technologies or traditional ways. And then, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, problems overall growth, uh, the, the Arab countries varies in terms of, you know, uh, from going from one extreme to, uh, uh, to another, where you have very advanced, very rich uh, countries, high GNPs, uh, capital uh, uh, GNPs with, with lowest GNPs in the world. So you're going from the richest to the poorest in, 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 in this area. Uh, uh, so, you know, if, he, if there is a political will, uh, it could happen. It provides a really a very strong environment mm -hmm. inducing to investment where, you know, it's like that model in South Africa when Mandela built, uh, was it, uh, uh, adopted, uh, uh, when the Mandela and Dukler joint forces mm -hmm. with, with the white South Africans and the African and the, and the black Africa. The, the clerk thought uh, a white person uh, that uh, uh, that the white will provide the investment, uh, the monies, the uh, and, and then you have the labor. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the mark to think about the Arab world is that you have countries with a lot of capital, we have a, a, a that rely on a lot on expatriates, like in the Gulf mm. countries, economies, versus poor mm -hmm. So if you have decision, uh, political will, that's a way uh, that you could go about it. But the simplistic way is to think in terms of incremental, small, by, uh, small step by step. Mm -hmm. I think uh, where this is the area where is still lack. Uh, 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 have been made in terms of engage uh, mm. uh, 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 you have more on relations lateral mm. uh, relations the connection is breaking up uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi perhaps we're going to uh, try to fix that but once more I invite you dear uh, audiences and also Dr. Hamoud Salhi to have a listen to what Abdul Hamid Sayam had to share with us when it comes to the mechanisms that uh, let's say Arab leaders agreed upon according to the communique there are many items that has its own mechanism for example with the question of Palestine there is a, a, a proposal to create a ministerial committee to address the uh, uh, world uh, in order to bring more recognition to the Palestinian state and also to go to the UN General Assembly and hold a special extraordinary meeting and ask the GA to accept Palestine as a full member uh, state. If that happens, that is what the uh, Palestinians are looking for. Also, there are many other mechanisms, like for the mechanism of an Arab committee uh, for mediation, uh, Arab committee to address the uh, uh, food security, uh, the energy to coordinate all these uh, uh, 
um, all these uh, issues that uh, concern the Arab world. There is also uh, a committee to continue its work with the mediation between Ukraine and Russia in this war. So uh, there is many different steps that could be taken. Also, on the other hand, there is also an idea to uh, revitalize the Arab League. The Arab League is, has been established in 1945. What is needed now is to uh, revitalize it to address the concern of the 21st century. This mechanism that has been uh, uh, brought to existence so many years ago is hardly fitting the, uh, our modern uh, world. So the uh, Arab League Secretary General, Ahmed Abulghid, spoke about revitalization of the Arab League, which is needed. So there must be a committee to look into the charter of the Arab League, the, mechan the new mechanism that has to be addressed, and to uh, look into those already established uh, ag um, uh, uh, agencies uh, that belong to the Arab League and uh, look into them and revitalize them again, or some, maybe abolish some of them that is not working. It's also, there is something to empower the youth and women and also civil society. I think that is an important element to bring the Arab League to the modern time to empower the civil society, empower women, empower youth, because 70% of the Arab populations are under the age of 30. So how can you neglect this big portion of the Arab people and keep them uh, outside the, uh, the, the, the work of the, of the Arab League and its, uh, its uh, resolutions? So, uh, Dr. Hamoud uh, Salhi, getting back to other uh, important points during the summit, uh, the summit, Arab leaders agreed on rejecting any form of foreign interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries. Arab leaders also reaffirmed their commitment to the principle of Arab solutions to Arab problems through the strengthening of the role of the Arab League in the prevention and resolution of crises in a peaceful manner. How can we see this implemented on the ground. The small steps you uh, mentioned earlier, Dr. Hamoud Sarh. And we could I, uh, 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 the, the solution uh, that sort of suggested on the Libyan issue. Uh, there you have a sense that what we need to do is uh, allow uh, the Libyans uh, to make their own decision. Uh, the Libyan foreign minister was very clear and that, we, that uh, they see the Algerian reconciliation as a model. Uh, th that is an area where there is benefits, particularly where we have come to, to a conclusion that uh, it's, uh, armed conflicts or a vi violence in Libya doesn't serve the interest of anyone. Now, there are diverging uh, point of views. Uh, uh, Arab countries who are uh, involved in the, in the Libyan uh, crisis and have a different point of view. But it seems the way the, uh, uh, the Libyan issue has been presented, uh, the emphasis on foreign presence uh, is a signal that the Arab world have come uh, 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 to accepting what the Libyans are proposing, basically having, you know, resolving this issue of uh, uh, elections mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 uh, and having elections in a sense, and also uh, adopting a solution that benefits the Libyans first and foremost. Uh, so, uh, and, and, in, and, and in this case, what you need to do is, number one, uh, if we are all agree that foreign intervention uh, is a bad idea, mm -hmm. well, let, let's not intervene. And again, this is a political decision. Uh, those policies are made based on a national. But if the Arabs, things like this, are 
to determine what that common national interest would benefit them. Like for our part in the region, it's, it is very clear that a violent Northern Africa doesn't serve the purpose any, of any. Okay, so okay. following this idea of collective, common working together for a solution will be, will, will be a good one, will, will work. The same thing when you look at the, the, the Yemeni crisis and we listen to the speeches that, uh, that we heard, there was some emphasis, for example, in, in the Houthis. Uh, there was some emphasis on looking at, at, at uh, uh, the Yemeni question uh, from a, a regional perspective that mm -hmm. there are outside forces involved mm -hmm. and that's where sort of we 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 came to the uh, uh, to the need to identify what do we mean by outside forces mm -hmm. uh, does it mean uh, is for example I iran a presence or alleged presence in certain uh, in yemen mm -hmm. is the same as as that of you know uh, this, the the uh, uh, the russians in syria so we need to come up with some with is some kind of, of, of agreement on that. Mm -hmm. And that could be done once you have a political will uh, that brings all together. Uh, and, and, and finally, really, about the, the whole vision of the Arab League, where are we going? I mean, what are the, what, what, you have all these crises that are coming and, and, and in the end, mm -hmm. it, it creates an atmosphere of, of, uh, of instability that benefits no one. And certainly mm -hmm. the presence of interests of superpowers, all of this are very, very important factors. Yes, that indeed. And politics. since you mentioned uh, the presence of all these uh, crises, it seems as though uh, the Arab world is plagued with different uh, crises at different levels and uh, due, let's say, uh, partly uh, to in, uh, foreign interference. And here, the Arab leaders did actually underline the importance of the participation of the Arab countries in defining the outlines of the new world order. How can this really happen if this region is, you know, characterized by uh, these crises and violence and uh, how can we create a more harmonized and united uh, bloc uh, uh, in order to become this effective actor which can with its will and capacities and skills contribute effectively and positively in this uh, area. Uh, you had the nail, uh, Karim. That is really the biggest uh, problem. Uh, you, you have so much potential in the, in the, in the Arab world. I mean, you, you talk in, in, in uh, conflicts and uh, that exist between the Arab that pre functioning. Look at the European Union, major obstacles, uh, differences, and yet they show up at the EU. They are not showing up because uh, they are showing up because they are EU members. So when you see the debate, people debating whether to attend the, the, the Algiers conference, not actually, you know, the, the, the for everyone, so it should be taken into account uh, the interests of everybody of the entire region, and that's the sad issues. I mean, you have crisis after crisis, and those crises are, are never resolved. I think the good thing about about the Arab League, when we come back, uh, just to come back to reflect to what you just said, uh, Karim, mm -hmm. is that the plan that the United States is having today for the uh, the Libyan is to divide it along what we call confederation or mm -hmm. federal system uh, and and but for the Arab League to come with a communique that stress the unity of the Libyan that stress the need to resolve this uh, peacefully that goes against foreign intervention that's mm. a huge uh, uh, acquisition for the Libyan for the Libyans mm -hmm. and for the first the Arab have have a for the establishment is you know you know kind of approach mm -hmm. that, that, that mm -hmm. the, the the foreign Arab world are what hindered the growth of the of this region. Of course, there are dependent mechanisms. There is mm -hmm. all of that, and we always talk on this on the on this program with you, Karim. The, the mm -hmm. need to have the independence, uh, the decision, the, the independence to decide. Mm -hmm. now, Algeria has that ability, uh, and you know, the decisions are made independently. Not all Arab countries have that uh, that, uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. that what you call that, that mechanism. Mm -hmm. Decisions are made for them. Yes. You wonder, for example, you have, yeah. 
And how can we actually reinforce this? I mean, uh, collective Arab action to manage crisis uh, and, uh, I mean, the need to adopt a joint and global approach uh, aimed at strengthening collective capacities to deal in particular with the various uh, crises. Uh, and here in particular, the recent ones are energy and food crisis here. So on the food crisis, yes, that's an economic issue, and that's mm -hmm. really despite what we, uh, we it's, it's a difficult situation, but that, that can be easily done uh, because it's a humanitarian issue, one. Mm -hmm. And then you really, if you think about uh, the amount of money that has been donated by certain Arab countries to outside sources, for that matter, to some countries, and, and, and if that some of that aid uh, is directed to uh, addressing the food crisis, crisis, mm -hmm. I think we'll be in good shape. That is easily done. Mm -hmm. I think for the security issues and, and, and looking at, at the, uh, you know, the, the, the collective defense uh, uh, mechanism that the Arab League has, which, mm -hmm. you know, stipulates mm -hmm. attack on everyone, looked at seriously mm -hmm. and, and, and war uh, with the uh, yeah, of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi, unfortunately, uh, the connection problem, uh, you're uh, breaking up again. Uh, but uh, we have reached actually the end of this special coverage. Thank you so much for your thorough analysis. And uh, it's been really uh, actually interesting listening to all these analyses. Of course, we have uh, uh, a reason to celebrate for having you with us, uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, dear viewers for keeping it here on All24 News on this special coverage of the summit that uh, took place here in Algiers and that Arab leaders are all calling a success. That's it for me. Bye for now. Yeah.